Mock-in time has just become much easier in .NET 8 with the Time Provider Abstract class. We'll show you how you can use the fake time provider to mock time in XUnit tests. Hit the subscribe button as we look at mock-in time. So this is the Time Provider Abstract class and there's a number of members I want to show you. So we've got the get UTC now and this gets the time as it is in UTC. We've also got this get local now method and this goes ahead, gets the UTC time and converts it into the local time zone. We can set the local time zone down here. Now the local time zone and the UTC now are set as virtual. So we can go ahead and override them and use them for mocking. Now in order to mock time in a unit test, we can add the Microsoft.extensions.timeprovider.testInNuget package into our project. What this does is it includes the fake time provider that allows us to set the UTC now and the local time zone, which we can use for mocking. Let's go ahead and add that to our project. In order to demonstrate how we go ahead and mock time, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and I'm going to go ahead and call it my calendar. Within the class, we're going to create a new constructor and we're going to pass in an instance of the time provider and we're going to store it as a read only field. Now we're going to write a method to check whether the day of the week now is Wednesday. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new Boolean method and we're going to call it, is it Wednesday? Then we're going to go ahead, take our instance of the time provider. We're going to get the local time as it is now and check the day of the week to see if it's Wednesday. If you're looking for a job as a .NET developer, check out our C-sharp coding challenges. Go to roundthecode.com slash challenges. Now we're going to write some X unit tests on our My Calendar class. The first one we're going to do is we're going to mock the day of the week as Sunday. We're going to call the is it Wednesday method, and we should expect it to return false. Now in order to do that, we need to create a new instance of the fake time provider. And within the fake time provider, there are a couple of methods that we can set. We can set the UTC now, and we're going to set that to November the 5th, 2023, which is a Sunday. We can also go ahead and we can set the local time zone if we wish. So we're going to do that. We can set, call the set local time zone method. We call timezone.info, find system time zone by ID, and we can specify the ID, which we're going to specify as Greenwich Standard Time. With the arrangement done, we can go ahead and call the method. So first of all, we're going to create a new instance of our My Calendar. So we go ahead, create the new instance of it, and we provide the fake time provider instance as the instance of the time provider. Now we can do the assert on it on the is it Wednesday, and we expect it to be false because the 5th of November is a Sunday. So we do call assert.false and my calendar is it Wednesday. If we run that test now, we expect it to pass. Let's see if it goes ahead and does that. There we go, we can see that the test has passed. We can also do the same to check that it's true if the date is set as Wednesday. So we're going to go ahead, copy and paste that. I'm going to slightly rename it. So we're going to mock Wednesday. And we're going to call the is it Wednesday method in the my calendar class. And we should expect that to return true. So the 8th of November 2023 is a Wednesday. So we'd expect that to return true. Let's run our test now and see if that passes or not. As you can see, both the tests have gone ahead and passed. The Time Provider Abstract class also has a Create Timer method that allows us to create a timer. That means we can go ahead and do some mocking on the timer. Now, in order to demonstrate how we go ahead and mock a timer, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and I'm going to call it Callback. Now, within that, I'm going to go ahead and set a property. So the property is going to be called Has Called Back. And when the callback is set on the timer, this will set the has callback to true. In order to set the timer, we're going to create a new constructor. I'm going to pass in an instance of time provider. Within the time provider, we can go ahead and we can call the create timer method. So first of all, we need to set the callback. So once it's called back, we're going to set the has callback to true. We also need to set the state and we can set that as this. The due time, that's when the callback is made. We're going to set that to 20 seconds. And finally, we need to set the period as well. 
It states specify timeout.infinite time span to disable periodic signaling. We're going to go ahead and do that. Time to write our timer test. So we can go ahead and copy and paste one of the tests that we've already written. We're going to make some changes to it. So we're going to call it timer underscore invokes callback set has called back to true. Now we're going to set the date within its own variable. So we can set that to the 8th of November 2023. And then we could go ahead and set the UTC now as the date variable like that. And now we can go ahead and we can do our tests. We're going to call a new instance of the callback and we're going to pass in our instance of the time provider. And at this point, we expect the has callback to be set to false. So let's go ahead and do that. So callback that has callback, we expect it to be false. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 30 seconds to the current date. Now in order to do that, we can call the fake time provider. We can call the set UTC now again, and we call the date that we've set in the variable, and we're going to add 30 seconds to it. At this point, then we expected the has called back to be called. And the reason for that is if we go back into our callback provider, we expect the timer to run the callback after 20 seconds and set the has called back to true. So let's go ahead and write that test. Let's run our test now and we expect it to pass. And we can see that has passed for us. .NET 8 also sees key services in dependency injection, where you can have multiple implementations of the same service. Watch that video next to find out how to use them.